Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will install Windows Server on Amazon EC2. Yes, we'll install Windows Server on Amazon EC2. We've done many installs of Linux and here we'll install a Windows Server so that you can RDP into it and that way you have your own set up to log in if you wanted a remote Windows workstation for yourself. Process is the same. We click on launch AMI, but we usually launch this Linux one because it's the first one and we usually pick the free tier eligible. But let's go back to choose a Windows AMI. And it's interesting because the search bar, the example it gives you is search for Windows and we can pick the first one and as you can see it's a uh, free tier eligible and we could select Windows Server 2019 now you'll notice here because once you pick an AMI it thinks that that's what you want to install so it tells me hey you already picked the Linux one do you really want the Windows one so you just say yes usually you don't do that but for demonstration purposes and simple setup we go through the whole process and really we could from the first page we can do a review and launch but I want to show you something with the security groups and that's the fact that it's not a Linux AMI so usually Linux is port 22 this is 3389 because that is the RDP port and we go through the process of creating a new key pair but this works differently than it does for a Linux VM. We download the key pair. Make sure you know where you save it because you will need it. And now we'll just uh, take a look at our instance. And it takes about a minute or two to provision this instance. So the instance state will continue to be pending for a little bit. It's not uh, too bad. It's, it's quick. But one thing that takes a while will be getting our login information. Remember, this is Windows. It's not Linux. Linux will come right up instantly and SSH will be up and running from the get go. So if we go to our instance ID and let's give it a name. Like I always say, it's good to give it a name because once you have more than one or two instances on your dashboard, it gets very difficult to know what's what. So here we go. When we try to connect here, you will see now the RDP client. It will be a download remote desktop file. And it downloads. So we've downloaded the key and we've downloaded that. And although it gives you a public DNS name, this is not something that you type into your web browser. You copy and paste. And you'll notice that you have to get the password but it mentions you need to wait at least four minutes in order for you to get a uh, password from the dashboard. So we have to wait. And you see, I copied the DNS entry, I pasted it in there, and nothing's gonna happen. And this is for RDP. And remember, we only allowed in our security group, we only allowed 3389, which is the RDP port. So, there's no other way to access this right now except through RDP. And we'll click on this client and we'll attempt to connect to it. But it asks for the administrator password. So we'll have to hang on and wait until this gets generated. And after waiting some time, let's see if this is now available. And there we go. And remember, if we downloaded that key pair file with Linux, it's a key pair. It's meant for you to SSH using that key pair, and it gives you the command very nicely here. But for Windows, this serves another purpose. This is used to decrypt the password. So once you need both, so now when you find it, it will give you this very long and different type of password. So now we go back into our RDP client 
And once we try to connect, we can paste the password here. And it goes through little messages that you could say, I don't want to see these messages in the future. But see, now we're connected into our remote Windows server. And one thing we have to uh, remember, too, if you are at work or if there is a firewall in place that is not allowing all outbound traffic, you will have issues. 3389 needs to be allowed outbound. And so we see it's just a normal Windows desktop. Then you can install applications. You can do whatever you want. When you first install this, and if you've ever installed a remote desktop setup like this, you know, you have this Internet Explorer 11 issues where almost everything is blocked, almost everything is denied. So you have to set this up. We'll just go through. We won't set anything up. We'll just uh, try to go somewhere. You know, we'll go to Amazon's website. We'll try to install one app. And see, you get all these error messages, but that's not part of this tutorial. When you get this running, you can configure it the way you like. You can remove this. You can install Windows Edge. And just to demonstrate, we can also uh, search for an app. I like having Notepad++ on wherever, whatever machine I use. So that would be probably one of the first things that I install for myself. So I just do a search for Notepad++. So as you can see, very simple. You're, it only took a few minutes to get this up and running. But it's important that you follow those steps. That's uh, one of the questions that I have gotten most often is how do I RDP back into this Windows AMI? And here's the issue. If you lose your key pair, you can't get in. And if you refresh this page for this instance, let's say you come back tomorrow, a couple days from now, and you try to access this instance, you won't have the password visible. You have to go through the whole process of, again, of decrypting the password so that you could see it. And once we do that, we can connect back into our Windows server. And you could resize this. The default is that it takes up all your desktop, your screen, your landscape. But if you minimize it and you, you, you will have the scroll bars. So the way I use this for work is I have this running on one monitor. And that way I could have it maximized. But now we'll go through a, a process of changing the password because I want you to be aware of something else. This is another gotcha. Just like any Windows, you could change the password. Now I already have copied the password here. So if we look at it, many password combinations are not working. I put in the old one that was there and it's not working. Why? Well, it's very simple. I went in here, I changed the password previously behind the scenes. Now I type in the real password and I will put in a new password. I will show you what that is just for so that you could see 
the issue that some experience when running a Windows. And there's the password, very secure and, and official. You want to make sure that you remember this password. Without this password, it will be very difficult to get back in. So we finish, we change the password. We'll exit out of this remote session. And if you see the screen where it says password, you'll see that I had copied the password and I will copy it again. It's still the same password from before. See? Now here's what happens. You change the password, or I, I change the password on this, and now this password will not work. I have to use the new password. And this password, the one that you see on the screen, will not change. It will not be updated for you. And here we go. We logged in. Everything is working. So if you are working on this and you change the password, you have to make sure that you remember what it is. And I'll demonstrate. I can stop this instance and go through the, the similar process. Because remember, this T2 micro instance is, is free tier, and you don't pay for the time that it stopped. So yes, it's free, but let's say you have two of these. You get a total of 750 hours between the two. So if you're working on one, and you don't need it any, any longer, at least not for not right now, you could just stop it. And then we go through the process of starting it all over again. And it's good practice. If you're not going to use something, just shut it down. You don't incur any costs and you have it there waiting for you. But the issue, once again, you might lose your key pair. So you won't be able to decrypt, decrypt the password. And the other issue is you might have changed the password and you forgot. See, once again, we come in here after a reboot or after a start and stop, and now we need this file, this key pair to decrypt the password. But this is no longer the password. So in essence, it's of no value to you. And in reality, it's just like any other system. You don't write down your passwords. So if you change it, you have to remember that you changed it. And like I always say, if you build it and you're using this for testing purposes, make sure to terminate, destroy everything. You can always start all over again tomorrow. And the reason you want to do this, even if you're under the free tier, it's you learn how to do things quickly. You actually learn. So if you're working on your certification, one of the AWS certifications or any of them, GCP Azure, this is a perfect way to learn. You build it, you destroy it. Build it, destroy it. And then you get good at it. Don't rely on just some paper. Don't rely on, on cheating strategies. Actually learn how to do and configure everything in AWS. And when you're in the free tier, it doesn't cost you anything. It's perfect. Free learning. Just practice, practice, practice. And I will keep creating more videos for you. And I'm going to start a series now for your AWS certification. So keep on the watch for that. Please subscribe. Please like. Please uh, get the notification so you see when I'm uploading the new videos.